By now, some people are probably finishing up the main story of Pokemon Scarlet Violet, and you might be left wondering, what can I do now? What is there left to do in the post-game? Lots of Pokemon games in the past have given us great post-games, some of them have given us limited post-games. What about this one? What about Pokemon Scarlet Violet? This video is going to go into everything you can do in post-game, which means specifically everything after the credits. And let's have a look at what number one is. Upon finishing the credits, you're going to get a thank you, treasured friends, and a nice keepsake memoir, little picture with you and your friends and your legendary, the adventurers that you just had your Xenoblade Chronicles experience with. And then you go straight into the post game. And this right here marks the very, very beginning of the post game. The first thing you do is you get the Master Ball. You can't even miss it. You're going to be going straight through the dialogue. You're going to be dragged to it and you're going to get that Master Ball forced to you. You'll be given that no matter what. After you get the Master Ball, they're basically going to give you a new mission to do a rematch with all of the gym leaders. Now these gym leaders are going to have pretty meaty teams, so go in prepared. You'll have to go and rematch them all to access the next part of the post game. All of the gym leaders will be packing six Pokemon apiece with really strong levels, so your team will want to be ready for this. But it is a very enjoyable aspect of the post game. You get to go back and encounter these gym leaders once again. Some of them you may have grown attached to, some are pretty fun. And you'll actually face them in a fair battle, right? That's kind of what you always expect or what you want from these challenges. I mean, sometimes your Pokemon might still be too OP, but that's okay. You'll still got to do eight battles throughout. After that, you'll be introduced to a new thing, the Ace Tournament, which is going to be held in the Plaza of Mesa Goza, and you're going to face off four different fighters and get a reward at the end. It's kind of fun how this will happen because the opponents you face will actually be random. They could be teachers, they can be your old rivals and teammates, such as Arvin and Nemoa and stuff like that. And it will also be the Elite Four and even the champion of the Elite Four you'll get to face once again. And at the end, you get a unique reward, which is pr pretty underwhelming. Actually, it's a little cap. <laughs> Sporty cap. After that, you can continue to do the ace tournament over and over again and face other different opponents at random. However, the rewards are not at all even remotely close to worth the time you put in you will get absolute garbage every time you finish it. Next up is getting access to the judge function, which will give you access to your IVs. You'll be able to examine the IVs of your Pokemon in your box, and in order to get access to it, just go to a Poke Center and heal up your Pokemon, talk to the person at the desk, and you'll get access to that. Another post-game thing is you can go back to Area Zero now, and you'll be able to find all of the Paradox Pokemon in the wild. The last time you were here in the pre-game, just before the end of it, uh, it, the Paradox Pokemon were not there. It was just all regular Pokemon and you're only able to fight the Paradox Pokemon in scripted events. However, now you can go back and you can find all the rare Paradox Pokemon. There's lots of, to explore here. You can go back with your Coridon, you can climb, you can collect some really good items. And of course, you can catch your Box Legendary as well. Your Box Legendary does appear in the very, very bottom pits of the area and you'll be able to find it just standing there waiting for your encounter and your catch. Next up is meeting your companions in the post game for exclusively post game stuff, which is going to give you some closure into their stories, the Titans, the Victory Road, and of course, the Starfall Street. And you'll get access to their bedrooms. Yeah, yeah, you'll get access to their bedrooms. But it also gives you a little bit of insight into their characters, getting to see those bedrooms too. But the closure, I think, to the storylines is the most important part of that. You'll be able to find them in different locations throughout the school, once or twice, a couple of meetings here and there, and then you'll finally end up in their bedroom. <laughs> Next up is the Slowpoke Cup. This is an exclusive reward that you'll only be able to get in post-game from your home ec teacher, oddly enough, and it requires you giving him a sweet Herba Mystica, which can only be obtained from five-star raids, which are unlocked after the post-game, interestingly enough. So now you can do five-star raids and get a sweet Herba Mystica, and go give one of those to your home ec teacher to get a slow poke cup for your picnic. Next up is an obvious one, guys, completing your Pokédex and getting the shiny charm. If you haven't noticed yet, Jack, your biology teacher in the school, will give you different rewards periodically as you progress through the Pokédex, starting with False Swipe as the very first one for catching 30 Pokémon. When you eventually get to the end, you will get a diploma and the shiny charm, which will increase your shiny odds, 
so that's pretty nice. That will get, help you get more shinies just in general, just like any other game, except for BDSP where it didn't even work. <laughs> and finally, we've reached the end of post game here. There's one more thing you can do, and that is something that's indefinite, does not have an end, and that is doing six and seven star raids, which only become accessible via the post game. You can continuously do five star raids to unlock a six star raid, and eventually it will appear on your map as this like black thing, and you'll be able to see the black shining raid stones when you look at it and go to it. And then you'll also see a brand new sort of overlay for it, which looks like that, and you'll be able to start doing those. Seven star raids will be introduced soon with the Charizard event as well. So that's gonna require a lot of cooperation and teamwork and very good Pokemon too, because these are gonna be really, really tough. However, as for the Charizard one, it is seen Pokemon is planning on using these seven star raids as special event raids to get Pokemon that you cannot normally get in the game. So definitely keep an eye out on my channel here so where I'm gonna give you all the information you need to know on that, as well as joining my community in Discord where you can cooperate with lots of willing players who will be ready to go to help you guys beat those raids. So I'll let you know when the Charizard one goes live. The EV one's coming up. However, the EV one is not six or seven star raids anyway. Okay, so that's it for post game. What do you make of it? Hopefully you find it fun and enjoyable. Hopefully you guys get some good six and seven star raids out of it and get that shiny charm too. And uh, my community is gonna be very, very helpful for helping you guys beat that Pokedex, getting everything you need. So check that out as well. The Discord link is always in the description. And I'll see you guys around. If you guys find anything else that's a little more secret or whatever's going on in this game, let me know in the comments. Until then, we'll be able to get some DLC uh, coming usually probably around next summer is probably what we're expecting for the first DLC and then another DLC around next winter same as in Pokemon Sword and Shield so the game ain't over yet folks not even after this video and not after you've done everything here so keep an eye out for that stuff and I'll see you around in the next one till then bye